Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending this seminar, which hopefully will be interesting to all of you. The personal information protection law comes into effect on Monday. Yes, this coming Monday. It is probably stricter than any other law on personal data protection in the world, including the European GDPR. The law matters to all business entities in China. Small processors are not exempted from the law. If you think you are handling very small data sets in China, it doesn't really matter. You are still bound to comply with the law fully. Think of your employees, the data you are handling or processing about your employees. You still need to be compliant with the law. For companies that handle a large amount of personal information, think of hotels, think of uh, consumer sectors, labor intensive sectors, the risks are relatively high. And we suggest to take the law very seriously. We suggest that you start with a self audit for compliance purposes, and you do that as soon as possible. Further, and as processing of personal data becomes more and more regulated, we see an increasing rising privacy data among individuals. The law empowers them to bring legal actions. So you need to be aware of that as well and prepared for that. So today we are here to help you to get a quick understanding of what the law means, what the law says, identify risk and suggest necessary actions. We have the actual experts with us to explain us how the law works. We have Yvette, we have Jane, and uh, at the end of the session, we will have Albert as well. Uh, concluding uh, with uh, giving us uh, uh, remarks. So with that in mind, I give the floor to the actual experts. So Yvette, please uh, tell us what the law says and help us understand what is coming on Monday. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mark, for the presentation and thank you all for joining this webinar session today. Uh, before we start, I wanted to give you a little background about how this webinar will be structured. Um, we'll have a first part, which uh, what we have called a theoretical approach, and then a second second part, which is the practical approach. On this first part, on this first part, uh, we will talk about uh, what is the PIPL, uh, to whom it applies, uh, how the PIPL compares to the GDPR because the GDPR is a, no, is a well-known law on data protection, and I think we all uh, have heard a little bit, and the key aspects of the, of the PIP, PIPL that applies to organizations. On the, on the second part, the, uh, the practical approach, uh, Jane will give you specific examples uh, that can easily relate to the day-to-day -day, uh, operations of the companies and, the, and how the uh, PIPL uh, plays out. Um, so, uh, as Omar was saying, uh, the PIPL uh, was passed on August 20 and will enter into force November 1st, that is tomorrow. And, and it's a very important law because it's the first comprehensive uh, legislation on personal information protection in the protection in the People's Republic of China, meaning that uh, not only applies to uh, companies in China, but uh, also to foreign companies uh, uh, working, uh, working in China, uh, even with no presence in that country, uh, who engage in the processing of personal information of individuals located in that country. Um, specifically, uh, the PIPL applies to, company, uh, to companies who provide products or services to individuals who are in China or who analyze or assess the behavior of those individuals. Uh, the law also uh, applies under any other circumstances as provided by other laws or regulations. This wording uh, is a bit broad, but we'll come, we'll come back to it later and explain, and explain its meaning. Um, foreign companies also need to be aware that may be required to 
establish a dedicated entity or appoint an agent or designated representative in China in order to be responsible for dealing with data protection uh, related mat matters that derive from this uh, PIPL legislation. Uh, the name and contact details of such, of such local agent or representative will need to be provided to the relevant authority, which has yet to be determined. Also, it might be necessary for certain type of business, for instance, company that have been registered as a criti critical information infrastructure or internet platforms to register before the National Cyberspace Authority, which is also known, known as the CAC, uh, when the processing of personal information reaches the threshold determined by said authority. Um, this is an open matter, which uh, at is, at is, is a question yet to be defined, so we will have to be alert to the requirements that the CAC uh, lays down um, in this regard. So, um, so how does the PIPL compare to the GDPR? Uh, the concept of uh, personal data and sensitive personal data in the PIPL is the same one as given in the GDPR, but it is important to highlight that the PIPL is the first national law in the People's Republic of China that defines the term of the, or the concept of sensitive personal information. And as that, uh, as we will see, sets out uh, relevant obligations for on processors which handle uh, this type of information. One of the main difference with the GDPR is that in the PIPL, uh, the PIPL, sorry, does not contemplate the legitimate, the legitimate basis as a, as a base for the, as a legitimate base uh, for processing personal data. Therefore, companies are expected to rely uh, heavily on the obtention of uh, individuals' consent. In this line, it is also important to be uh, to be aware that the PIPL uh, regulates specific uh, specific cases where the obtention of what is called uh, the separate consent will be necessary. For instance, in the event of cross-border uh, uh, of personal data or the provision of personal data to be processed by a third party. Therefore, uh, it should be analyzed on a case-by-case case, case case basis, um, whether companies will need to obtain uh, the referred separate consent or not. As in the GDPR, uh, the PIPL also imposes a number of obligations uh, to what they call a uh, personal information processor, which is a term used uh, under said law to refer to all companies that process a personal data. Among those obligations are the notification requirement by means of which certain information needs to be provided to the data subject when his or her personal data is being processed. For instance, uh, the name, of the, name or of the processor and the contact information the processing purpose or the method or the, or the methods or means by which the data subjects can exercise uh, the rights that are provided under the PIPL. Additionally, and as we said before, and when uh, sensitive personal for information is involved, processors shall notify uh, data subjects the necessity to process said data and the impact that it has in their rights and interests. Other obligations for personal information processors include the formulation and implementation of internal uh, management policies and procedures and the adoption of security measures and the, and the obligation to conduct regular compliance audit or the execution for example, of a personal information protection impact assessment. Also, uh, we wanted to point out that under the PIPL, where a decision is made through, is made through an automatic decision making that has a significant impact on an individual rights and interests, the individual shall have the right to record the personal information processor to make an explanation and be able to reject the decision that is made through, um, through the, this automatic, uh, automatic decision making process. So um, we will move forward now to the key aspects of the PIPL uh, for organizations. One of um, so the cross so the cross border transfer of personal information is actually uh, one of the main aspects that is more that is more is most largely covered under the PIPL. In particular, the PIPL indicates that personal information must be legally transferred overseas when one of the different um, obligations. Uh, that are included in the PIPL are, fulf are fulfilled. Among those obligations, for example, is the obtention of a personal information protection certification from a, per from a, from a professional agency or passing the security assessment, which is organized by the CAC. 
uh, critical information infrastructure operators and personal information processors whose, qu whose quantity of personal data um, uh, that are being processed reaches the amount indicated by the Cyber Cyberspace Administration of China shall store uh, information, information collected and generated within the People's Republic of China in the People's Republic of China. Therefore, as it can be inferred, for companies in possession of large amounts of personal information or of personal data in, in a critical information infrastructure, um, it will be more difficult to transfer personal data outside the People's Republic in China due to the mandatory um, security assessment, which, is which, is, which will be regulated under cyberspace uh, administration of China and administered um, for said entity. Also, it is important to, to know that the PIPL will work together with the cybersecurity law and the data security law to establish a broader regulatory architecture governing the cybersecurity and the, that data privacy protection in China. So that means that the PIPL, uh, it shall be analyzed together with other regulations uh, that complement each other. So as we were saying before, uh, there is this wording uh, in the PIPL uh, that says other conditions provide it, provided in laws or administrative regulations, regulation, regulations, which is included in several article, articles, articles of the law. This is a sentence that it is used time and time again in the PIPL, and it mainly leaves the door open to modifications or other um, obligations that can be introduced by other laws or administrative regulations in China. So, as a conclusion, and before my colleague, um, by my colleague Jean uh, starts with her section, I just wanted to highlight that in order to ensure compliance with the PIPL, and given that, as we have seen, many aspects of the law uh, still remain a bit uncertain, it should be necessary to develop a tailor-made program to ensure compliance, but also keep an eye to any developments of the PIPL, because as we have seen, there are many, uh, there are still many gray areas that have to be developed. Uh, and now, without further delay, I'm going to uh, pass it to Jane. Jane? Thanks, Yvette. Uh, so I'm going to um, talk about some practical considerations for businesses in China. And due to the time limits, we will uh, only talk about the six major issues that we, uh, we believe are relevant to most uh, businesses with subsidiaries or operations in China. So I will just start with the first one, data security. Um, here, uh, we will see some facts about the data security. Yvette, could you please uh, turn to the next um, page? Thanks. Uh, so here are some backgrounds about data security. COVID-19 has led to a rise in, data, uh, in cyber attacks. Uh, as people work from home, these cyber uh, criminals often targeted on remote workers. And uh, this uh, fraudulent email often appear as a COVID-19 comp company policy update or something like that. So, uh, if companies have implemented sufficient uh, training mechanism, this kind of risk can actually be avoided. And the, se uh, the second fact is that small businesses are often not aware of the real cyber security risks um, they are facing today. Um, small businesses often think they are not the target of cyber crime, but the reality is simply not so. The third fact is that Cyber attack can often result in very serious effect to business, including leak of personal data, of course, and loss, uh, financial losses directly, or even production shutdown, IP theft. This is especially true for manufacturers' industrial control system, especially in China. In China, we see a lot of in, uh, accident uh, that happens to the industrial control system. These criminals are more and more targeting on the industrial control system because they know that um, this system would rely on constant uh, uptime and by hitting on this system, they have a good chance of get paid. So China this year is, uh, is among the top countries that uh, receive the most amount 
attacks, amount of attacks to the industrial control system. So our advice and uh, for companies are to, to implement um, organizational and technical measures to protect companies from existing and emerging cyber attacks. This is also required by cybersecurity law, um, by personal information protection law and data security law. Uh, all these three laws um, regulate data security from different perspectives uh, with cybersecurity law focused on network security, personal information protection law focusing on the uh, security of uh, personal information and the data security law um, regulates um, the data handler with regard to the data security, uh, especially focusing on the important uh, data. So uh, we have some um, um, practical suggestions for companies to take. First is to consult and implement Chinese national standards. The national standard classified um, operator uh, net network networks into five um, categories from level one to level five. Uh, the system that suffers uh, least, uh, that will suffer the least risk uh, in, in case of a cyber um, security breach uh, is classified as level one. So for most companies, uh, probably uh, the networker will fall under uh, level one. Uh, and the, what the companies need to do is to identify which level their network fell under and carry out the corresponding measures as suggested by the national standards. Uh, the second of advice is for IP department. Uh, they really need to um, identify the real risks that happening in their businesses uh, and seek external resources if necessary. Um, actually, there are uh, many external uh, professionals um, in this area. So this, uh, third, the third suggestion is about uh, compliance. The law requires report of cybersecurity incidents and personal data breach to the competent authority. So um, normally the compliance department will need to lead the process. The last one is about um, employee trainings, as we have said, uh, this is very uh, necessary um, under, under um, the circumstance of COVID-19 and the increasing uh, cyber attacks that we are facing today. The trainings are really, uh, re really works. Um, the second topic is about um, face recognition app. Face recognition apps and face identification cameras have been quickly adopted by companies in China in recent years, used in virus settings. Uh, I give two examples here. Uh, one is the building, uh, building access, and the other is employee attendance check. So this kind of practices can be problematic because um, the PIPL now says that um, sensitive personal data, if processed, must have sufficient um, necessi necessity and adopt strict um, pro protection measures. So in these cases, we can hardly see the uh, real necessity because uh, for checking employee attendance and uh, granting office access, there are plenty of alternatives and um, Note that the, uh, the face recognition information no doubt belongs to biometric information, uh, which is defined clearly as a sensitive personal information under PIPL. So the practice can be even more controversial if it comes to using the face recognition app in commercial settings. In commercial settings. Uh, well, yeah, uh, in commercial settings, we have a case here about uh, it is an administrative penalty imposed 
on color China uh, due to consumer right violation. The fine was 500,000 yuan at that time. Um, color was fined for its installing of um, cameras that capturing face uh, recognition data in its uh, over 200 color store um, nationwide. Um, so without cons consumers consent, uh, that is a key problem. And uh, if the case happens after the PIPL takes effect, the penalties can be much higher and uh, this can result in a serious violation of PIPL, which may, among, which may um, cause uh, lead to a uh, fine up to five, uh, 50 million yuan or 5% of organization's annual revenue. Um, and even this can result in uh, directly, uh, the person directly responsible be fined uh, up to 1 million yuan. Also know that there are local regulations regulate particularly on the use of face recognition app and face recognition uh, and broadly um, uh, biometric data. For example, in Tianjin, uh, companies are prohibited from collecting biometric data such, such as faces, fingerprints, and voices. So our suggestion for companies in China is that if possible, it's always better to avoid collecting any biometric personal data. And next issue is work uh, monitoring in workplace. Security cameras. So security cameras they, these days are used in industrial properties uh, in China mainly, uh, meaning factories, industrial zones, industrial parks, um, so under PIPL, the installment of any image capturing equipment will be necessary for maintaining, shall be necessary for maintaining public security and image collected shall not be used for any, any other purpose unless with individuals separate consent. So these cameras often used um, for uh, guaranteed workplace safety, but also used we see in other uh, for other purposes such as monitoring the uh, labor efficiency or monitoring uh, the the product production quality, or we see to to prevent theft. So if used for this purpose, uh, we believe a separate consent from individual will be required after PIPL takes effect, and. Um, PIPL also requires that uh, if companies install these security cameras, a permanent sign must be indicated, uh, showing its uh, indi indicating its existence. And there are also local regulations to be noted. For example, the security cameras need to be filed record with local public security authority, or the local law may require upgrading the system in line with the national or industrial standards. The other uh, issue is about company issued devices. Companies sometimes may need to uh, monitor the, the activities that are happen happening on the company issued uh, devices uh, or backup or remotely control company issued devices. So the law does not prohibit such monitoring activity on company issued devices, but this can have risks if employees are not duly informed. So to avoid this kind of risks and unwanted collection or unexpected collection of personal data, we suggest to make it clear in the labor policy that, that employees in general should not have a expectation of privacy in company issue devices and work devices should only be used for work purpose. And we suggest to tell employee the detail about how the company issue devices uh, operate, how, it, uh, how the activities can be monitored. 
So the next is about handling employee data. Well, this is uh, relevant to all the companies. Um, first, the lawful basis of processing. The lawful basis first is the consent. Uh, employers may, uh, may opt for consent as legal basis for, for processing, and or they can incorporate personal information clause into the labor rules and policies, or incorporate it into the collective labor contract. So the, the actions will be uh, that employers either need to collect employees' consent or they need to review and update employ the, the, the employer, the labor policies and uh, uh, or update the, the collective labor contract. So in certain occasions, companies may need to provide personal data of employees to third parties. For example, in a typical HR outsourcing uh, arrangement, if company chose a constant as the legal basis for processing, then a separate consent for provision to third parties required and a notification about the recipient and the way uh, how recipient will process the data is also required under PIPL. If company process employee data based on incorporated personal data, information clauses in their internal labor policies or collective labor contract. Consent then is not required, but a notification requirement will still need to be satisfied. Uh, the next is about the data, the data minimization principle. PIPL clearly um, established the data minimization principle. For employers, that means um, companies uh, can only collect the uh, in uh, labor the the employ uh, the, the personal data of employees that uh, that will be relevant to the formation and um, uh, performance of the labor contract. That means the name, ID, or um, academic background, the professional background, but um, marital data, maternity uh, status family situation, et cetera, um, are generally considered not relevant and should not be collected. Uh, next is uh, uh, anonymized data. We suggest always to use anonymized data if possible, uh, if companies need to provide, anonym, uh, provide certain employee personal data to third party for carrying out certain works. Because uh, Article 4 of the PIPL clearly says that uh, anonymized data is not um, considered pers uh, person it's not, it's not uh, regulated under, under PIPL, so they are clearly excluded. Uh, so for example, uh, if um, companies uh, need to provide us with employee um, medical record for analyzing a work-related related injury, for example, uh, we, we do not need uh, employee name or ID to analyze that. So um, uh, in these cases, it's better to, to provide anonymized, anonymized personal data always. And the retention period. Under the PIPL, the retention period shall be limited to the shortest period as necessary for achieving the purpose of processing. Under the labor scenario, uh, we suggest the period, uh, the reasonable period will be uh, two years because the labor contract law says um, an employee shall keep record of the labor contract for at least two years for inspection purpose. Another issue is about providing personal information to headquarters. Uh, this is uh, we will we would like to to remind that this is also subject to the cross border transfer rules and the PIPL, which I will talk about in next slide. Uh, about the cross border transfer of personal data, Yvette has mentioned the the first and second uh, legal basis, the conditions that must be satisfied. 
I would like to note that the first uh, must apply to C, uh, CII operators and the processors um, that reaches the threshold amount uh, to be decided by CAC. But for the rest of processors, uh, they are uh, flexible to choose from these uh, uh, three conditions. Uh, so we would like to uh, say that uh, the third, the third point is most convenient to be satisfied, uh, as it only requires to adopt the template contract to be formulated by CAC. Uh, and this, uh, this template contract is not, uh, has not been issued yet, uh, but we expect, it, uh, we expect that it will be issued very soon. So uh, uh, for companies that uh, involved in cross-border transfer of personal data, we suggest to adopt the template contract um, once it uh, is issued. Uh, the next is about the uh, requirements, uh, other requirements to be uh, satisfied for cross-border transfer. Um, notification requirement, uh, the, the processor will need to notify the data subject of certain issues re relating to the cross-border transfer and uh, obtain the separate consent. Uh, Yvette has also noted this and uh, also, uh, before the transferring of uh, personal data overseas, the processor will need to carry out PIA. The PIA should cover some uh, issues, uh, uh, the, but the PIPL only regulated in a very general way. So um, to, to, to draft the PIA report, we would need to refer to the applicable national standard although it's, uh, it is um, of recommended nature for the moment. Well, we also would like to note that um, today, uh, the authority just uh, published the specific rules for uh, PIA for soliciting public comments. Uh, so we, we expect the, the formal law will be issued soon in this regard. And about PIA report, PIPL require, requires that it shall be kept for at least three years. So some actions for companies to take if they involve in cross-border transfer of personal data, first adopt a standard contract if it's issued and uh, notify the data subject regarding the cross-border transfer and collect separate consent and then carry uh, an and carry out uh, uh, PIA and CAP records. PIA will need to be carried out before, before the transfer to, uh, to, to overseas. Uh, well, the next problem is uh, establishing um, intern internal data protection rules and policies. PIPL requires the processor to formulate internal management system and operating procedures, reasonably determine the authority to process personal information within the organization and carry out regular trainings. So why, why it's important uh, to, to adopt these internal rules and policies on data protection? Well, um, it's important because we, we do not uh, want to violate the PIPL and which will result in administrative penalties, of course, but it's also important, uh, we would like to emphasize is that the adopting these internal rules and policies can, um, can save the companies from uh, uh, criminal uh, liabilities and civil liabilities. We will give two examples uh, so that you can see the reason uh, first is the Lianjia case. Lianjia is a real estate broker, is the largest real estate broker in China. And in this case, um, Lianjia's employee uh, used client's data for its own benefits, for handling some personal affairs, uh, for, handling his, uh, uh, for handling the residence uh, certificate for himself and his wife. 
so uh, this misuse of personal data, uh, the court believe is attributable to Dianjia company because the company failed to adopt sufficient internal ma management measures. Um, basically, Lianjia did not limit uh, employees' access to the client's personal information. So in Lianjia's company then, um, each employee can go, go on the internal platform and view and download copy client's personal data. So the course, the court finally held the company liable for employees' data security breach. Another example of compliance is um, Nestle case. Uh, in Nestle case, six employees of Nestle, they, uh, they, they give benefits to uh, hospital staff for obtaining some personal information of uh, pregnant women for promoting Nestle product, the milk powder. And um, the court uh, uh, did not held Nestle liable, although the, the defendant lawyer argued that the crime should be considered as unit crime, namely a uh, crime uh, committed by company instead of crime committed by employees but the court did not accept this argument. The court openly considered um, the personal information processing policy of Nestle China and openly considered the code of conduct of Nestle China finally came to the conclusion that the crime, the crime of infringing personal information uh, of citizens were committed by six employees instead of uh, Nestle China. So from these examples, you can see having sufficient uh, internal data protection rules is very important. And we suggest to uh, take actions earlier as possible to establish the internal data protection rules and policies uh, for complying with um, PIPL. So this is basically uh, my part of a uh, presentation and I will um, uh, transfer to, to Albert for, for a conclusion. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jane. And thank you very much for, for, the, for the presentation. Um, I, I think that uh, uh, after having heard uh, all the, 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 the main features of this new uh, and important regulation, uh, we have a, a double message. First one is that we should not be so confident on the on the fact that since we are all quite used to GDPR uh, uh, requirements, uh, making uh, an automatic uh, 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 transfer of all such standards in our procedures and corporate policies uh, should suffice. That's not the case, as you have seen, because there exists relevant uh, significant uh, uh, differences as for example, those regarding the legal basis for the processing of personal data. So given the sensitivity of this, we think and we wanted to share with you uh, these, uh, these news so that you count with the knowledge and the, and the, and the tools for ensuring uh, compliance with, new, uh, with this new set of rules, which we may remind that applies to a potential audience of one, 0.4 billion people, which is the largest national uh, market for the for the collection and processing of personal data, and that in that market we have more than 70 percent, uh, so seven zero. Uh, 70 percent uh, internet penetration so so it is obvious that uh, what we have become familiar with uh, with GDPR uh, it's certainly uh, uh, shared with uh, the Ch Chinese related transactions and particularly uh, applying GDPR standards will not suffice but it will require specific uh, adaptation to the PAPL as uh, Yvette and, and Jane have, have told us. So that's, 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 that's it. Um, we will be very happy 
to uh, share any thoughts or respond any consultation that you may have. In order to do so, you can simply drop us an email to the uh, uh, email address that you see on screen. So that's webinars at cuatrecasas.com. And again, uh, we will be happy to be in contact with you in connection with this matter. So thank you very much. Uh, enjoy this uh, Halloween uh, uh, weekend, and we hope that you get lots of sweets and very few uh, thrills, particularly in the field of data protection. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you on the next event. Bye-bye.